happening. I was just passing by, saw a poster. Uh, my curiosity uh, drove me here. Uh, so I was really curious to ask, uh, you know, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> And what are you doing here? And secondly, <laughs> this is a curiosity kind of a superficial question. <laughs> and since it seems that you are a spiritual and um, spiritually inclined uh, person, what's the difference between consciousness and awareness? Because this has been a question that I have been pondering on recently. Uh, so thank you in advance for taking, <laughs> dealing with this. So your question was, who are you? And I think if I understood your question correctly, it's in the context of the the spiritual, let's say, masters, teachers, offerings that one comes across perhaps in Tiruvannamalai but also in the Indian subcontinent. I don't know how you know familiar you are with it but we have um, a very ancient system, in fact it's the most ancient system of spiritual transmission which is called Guru Vada uh, and the transmissions happen through the Guru Shishya Parampara, which is where there's a spiritual master who has students who learn from that master. They learn actually self-realization processes which lead them to themselves, knowledge of self. And they also learn enlightenment processes which lead them to a knowledge of the cosmic, let's say consciousness, if you want to call it that. So this is a... Guru Vada is actually a pillar, a very important pillar of the Sanatana Dharma. Sanatana Dharma is the eternal Dharma, the eternal way of life practiced in the subcontinent and now also in many parts of the world by people who follow this Dharma. So it's not religion in that sense because there's no founding, uh, let's say, no founder as such, like if you have Christianity, you have Jesus as the founder, if you have Buddhism, you have Buddha, Baha'ism, you have Baha'u'llah. In the Sanatana Dharma, it is the living masters that hold up the Dharma, that uphold it, which means they transmit knowledge of self-realization and enlightenment based on their own experience to their students, so it's a living, it's a process of living transmission, which also keeps alive the trajectory of spirituality, always bringing up the new uh, that has been realized. So you asked who I am, so I'm in, in that context, as I understood it. So I'm one of those maybe 100,000 such, or more than 100,000 maybe such, uh, guides, teachers, masters, whatever you want to call it. We call them Adhyatmik Guru in India. Adhyatmik Guru is a spiritual guide, actually. Now, whether I am a guide or not to a person depends also on the relationship they have with me and how they respond or whether what I say resonates with them. Regarding your question about awareness and consciousness, so these two words have often been used synonymously in the arena of spirituality or in the in the in spiritual work. I would say that awareness is the perception of being conscious and consciousness is the perception of existence. If one is pedantic about these, uh, about the meanings attributed to these words, one misses out the actual point which is fundamentally experiential in nature. It is what are you experiencing, whether you call it awareness or you call it consciousness or you call it the perception of consciousness or the consciousness of awareness. These are, these are words that are so close to each other in a general sense that what I feel is very important is just what is your experience. It's not about what you read in a book that is conceptual, let's say, 
conceptual awareness of something, but it still isn't experience. It's conceptual experience, which is one-sixth of the actual experience you can have. So a lot of the times in, in the Indian subcontinent, we are very precise how we define people who have conceptual knowledge. They are called acharyas, you know? They are called acharyas. They are people who are able to take knowledge from here and transmit it to another. An adhyatmic guru, for example, a spiritual guide, is somebody who directly shows you yourself, who turns your gaze inward, who continuously directs you to the self, which is the soul within you. And reading all the books on all the spiritual masters and what they all have said cannot give that experience unless that actual act of direction inwards is done. In the subcontinent also, uh, what, is, what is clearly believed and, and, and followed actually quite a lot is that it is imperative to have a spiritual guide to show you the self, just as you would have a doctor to, you know, heal you in one area or a lawyer to take care of your... So the Adhyatmic Guru is almost like a sort of a... is, a, is almost like a profession. It is somebody who shows you yourself, you know, devoid of all the accoutrements and all the, you know, the, the frills and, and the embroidery. An Adhyatmic Guru is a simple job which certain people are qualified to do and others not. Finally, I'm sitting here more actually to say, hey, you know, you have a soul, you were born with an Antar Atman, a soul, trying to detach from your actions and, and moving into an identification with the cosmic soul within is actually not uh, conducive to living here in this body, in the here and the now. It is almost an escape. It is better to take on a small identity, which is your name, you know. What is your name, dear? Camille. Camille, that's a female's name, isn't it? It's Arabic name. Ah, Kamil in Arabic. Okay, I thought it was Kamil, like in French. Kamil, and what's your mother's name? Hela. Hela. So, and where are you from? Where were you born? In Eastern Europe. In Eastern Europe, where but? My father's family comes from Belarus, my mother's You were born in Belarus? In Poland. In Poland. So let's say that Kamil, son of Ila from... Ila, you said? From Belarus. That's an identity you take on. So that with that identity, you can actually find self. Because to retract and detach from all your actions and say, you know, this is not me, this is not me, this is not me. Uh, these are only my actions. This is only the body doing what it has to do. I am the Supreme Self. Is a is sort of not taking on responsibility for the actions. So what is said over here is, take on an identity. Because you go mad if you don't take on an identity. You lose the... You see a lot of people, for example, in Tiruvannamalai, Rishikesh, places like that, following Neo-Advaitin ideas of what actually identification with Supreme Soul is, and confusing it for actually an abnegation of responsibility for their actions. Also, having practiced these, taken up these practices and practiced them for 20 or 30 years, they still haven't found themselves and there is a sadness which grows. When actually the self is not that, but it's this, it's here and now. And the process of tuning into that here and now is what actually is being spoken about here. So, who am I? I'm one who speaks that. There's no... There's no... 
need to actually even know the difference between awareness and consciousness because these two are words that actually you know fade into each other or melt into each other and can mean each other in certain uh, contexts so the focus is more on where is the ego in this action of mine is this action of mine inspired by the ego or is it inspired by the truth of my existence which is the soul we call the antar atman in sanskrit the inner residing atman the ahankar the ego and it is the i we've taken on an i a very slim i because if you add on to that i then you're already talking ego so a spiritual tool in that sense is to take on this i kamil son of ilza from poland now stands there in the middle of life and has to decide from moment to moment where is this action arising from is it from the ahankar from the ego from the loud demanding clamoring insisting pushing opinionating voice of the ego or is it from what kamil may have forgotten over the years which is the very soft almost imperceptible impulse of the antaratman the soul the soul is a material entity it is not an idea in a book or an energy field i mean if the soul is an energy field then everything is an energy field certainly but looking at it from a material point of view it is a material presence it's an atom atma it's an atom and there is a a communication happening between the soul and the i which is actually the body and it is that communication which we open ourselves to by being vigilant about when the ego is attempting to distort our perception of the experience we have the world around us so in each moment the attempt is to be that present and that here and so clearly say i'm this only if i'm really this and i know what this is will i know what that is so you're here and now very present very tuned in aware that this action in this moment is emerging from either a command of the ego or a very silent impulse of the soul binary in nature it's a yes or a no in every moment and the future of spirituality that trajectory is going to increasingly be the training of the human being in detecting the impulse of the soul over and above the loud and clamoring and demanding noise of the ego it is signal we look for and we circumvent the noise it's a clear rejection of the idea that one can actually become the observer and detach from the actions and from all desires and thoughts and so on because that is tantamount to and is often is a refusal of the responsibility for the actions that have been undertaken it even was a shake up for me when this you know teaching started to manifest the 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 sheer materiality of it the sheer you know 
the sheer inavailability of any escape mechanism from the present moment. So in that discourse, consciousness, awareness, sure, we can have descriptions for these and try to give them, invest meaning in them, and they will get some meaning. But what it boils down to is your experience. This is not, for example, religion where belief is asked of you. In spirituality, it is only experience that counts. I can say anything I want, but unless you experience this present moment and you actually actually experience the experience of presence and of the antaratman, of the soul and of its presence, its material presence, whatever I say is going to simply be one more, you know, thought in a book. So the focus is very strongly on the experience of the soul and living a life inspired in every moment by the impulse of the soul and taking on an identity, not dissolving into the Supreme Self, because if we are meant to dissolve into the Supreme Self, then we don't have to be in a body at all. We can actually be flying around as spirits and then we'll be fine with our experience of Supreme Self. But since we are in a body, it is our responsibility to, to be this and to be this in surrender in every moment, bending down in surrender, samarpan, 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 in surrender to the Supreme Soul, which is individualized in us as the Antaratman. And now it would be nice, you asked me who I am, now it would be nice if you started to know who you are. 